well good morning everyone in fact can i say good morning i think it's just about still the morning today feels like a bit of a weird day because today is actually a tuesday for me as well it is the day that i am uploading this video and if you know me you know i do not normally work this closely to uploads i always like to be a little bit ahead of myself i always like to be a little bit prepared but i have been so sick <laughs> so ill for the last few days i have had i think i've had the flu i think is the only way to describe it because i have literally been floored for like five days straight and today's the first day where i've started feeling a little bit better i feel like you can still probably hear it in my voice but i'm not quite up to 100 but i literally have been saying how dead january is and i really hate it as like a consumer because you guys know I love to watch YouTube as much as I love to put it out. I always get questions from people actually, whenever they ask me like, how on earth do you manage to do three videos a week? And I'm like, because I just love it. A day where I don't film feels like a write-off day. Like I hate not filming. I love chatting to you guys. I love filming for YouTube. I love watching YouTube. And I hate how much of a dead month it is in terms of content because I want to entertain. Like I need to watch things. And so I really did not want to let an upload go unuploaded. Does that make sense? A schedule to go amiss basically because I love being able to upload for you guys. I didn't want to miss a video and I wanted to kind of just bring you something this January because I feel like this is just the perfect time when it comes to just like slow steady uploads and slow steady content and that is exactly what this is going to be today. So I've got my cup of tea. I'm literally not even sitting like over the blanket. I've literally got the blanket on top of me so that I can get nice and cozy. I've also got beside me i've got my water and i've also got a box of tissues just in case those are needed i'm already going to need to stop for a coughing fit this i think is going to be the theme of the video i've been lucky enough to have had nurse alex by my side for the last five days he has literally been the sweetest thing nursing me back to health and has also been the voice of reason whenever i've been like i need to start filming i need to get a video ready i have no video for tuesday he's been the one like it's okay if there's no video it's not the end of the world however i am feeling well enough to have put a little bit of makeup on i'm not gonna lie. i've not really done my hair i did have an everything shower this morning because there is one rule in my family whenever someone is feeling ill oh, i need to cough again one rule is that you always feel better after a shower. So whether you're hungover, ill, you literally feel like you are on your deathbed, go and have a shower. And I managed to do a bit of an everything shower this morning because I've not washed my hair in five days. It was not looking cute. It was not feeling cute. I don't know if anyone else feels this, but do you ever find like if you don't wash your hair, it actually gets like drier. So I have lathered it with hair oil this morning. Although we're not really styling it. I'm not even wearing my contacts today. We're just going for glasses, minimal makeup, minimal effort but just a bit of us time. I feel like it's one of those where, you know, you go and meet your girlfriend for coffee and you text them being like, you know what, I'm really not feeling well. And they're like, that's okay. It's not a cute coffee date. This isn't like a dress up and go and get a Starbs. This is just a couple of friends catching up. And I thought that was what this video could be. I actually planned last week before I fell ill to do a bit of a Q&A and I was just going to like slot it into a video somewhere. But I thought, you know what, actually, Let's just sit down and do like an old fashioned, old school YouTube q and I can answer some questions. If you're new around here, you can get to know me a little bit better as well because there have been a lot of new faces from Vlogmas. And I know there's always so many of you coming over from like Instagram and Pinterest. You always say that those are like the two main ways that you find me. So I would actually love to know, how did you find my YouTube channel? Please comment down below because I think it would just be so, so interesting. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button already, absolutely love it if you hit it now you can come and join the youtube family i promise you i'm normally a lot more alive than this i'm normally a lot more sprightly and we do i was about to say we normally have but i'm making sure today that this is going up tonight we have three videos a week so if you are finding that it's a little bit dull this january and that there's not a lot of content to keep you entertained hopefully i can provide that for you so tuesdays thursdays and sunday are my upload days i'm gonna put my tea down pick my phone up because i've screenshotted all of the cues from you guys and let's get into it now there have been a lot of wedding questions and i feel like i've been a little bit aloof when it comes to the wedding so i kind of want to lay it out on the table for you guys and give you a huge wedding update in this video so the first question is have you picked a wedding date and the answer is yes 
we have a wedding date which also means we have a wedding venue now I'm not getting too excited about it because Alex and I are really taking our time with regards to this wedding. If you don't know, we got engaged in April of last year and we both agreed that we didn't want to rush the planning, we didn't want to rush the process. We've already been together seven years, so we're not the kind of couple where we're like, well, we need to get married within like the next six months. Like, we're not in a rush. We know that we're going to be together forever anyway, whether we get married next year, the year after that, or the year after that. So, I can officially tell you that we are going to be getting married in 2026 and so many of you guys have already guessed this but we are going to be doing a Christmas wedding which literally oh god I'm gonna sneeze <laughs> I'm gonna lose all of my lipstick by the end of this video from the amount of nose blowing that is going to be going on but it excites me so so much that we have officially locked in the date and we are going to be going for a Christmas wedding in 2026. We were really back and forth with regards to what we wanted to do with the wedding, whether we wanted to go like spring, summer. I feel like there's so many options these days. And I think because we got engaged in April, it was obviously like springtime. It was kind of like the beginning of the wedding season. We fell in love with the idea of a summer wedding. And we actually we're kind of choosing between two venues we were this close one of them i can tell you actually is quite a popular venue that we went to go and view that is kin house it's in the cotswolds it was absolutely beautiful and we fell in love with it but there was a couple of things that kind of put us off it there was a couple of things that we were like that's not quite perfect that's not quite perfect a big thing about it as well is that it's the kind of venue that like you need sunshine it needs to be beautiful and bright and sunny there's a lot of like outdoor space that i feel like would just go completely to waste if you didn't have nice weather and like even like to walk from different areas of the venue you need to go outside and there was quite a few times where we were like so what's the contingency plan and they turned around and went umbrellas which i feel like if i'm going to go for a summer wedding i would want it to be beautiful sunshine beautiful weather and i just feel like you can't guarantee that here in the uk the other thing that kind of put me off kin house and i feel like this is a bit of a niche one is the fact that there have been so many influencer events there recently i can literally count on one hand how many there have been in like the last year that i have seen at kin house so i feel like by the time my wedding had rolled around i would have been bored stiff of it i would have been like i have seen this on everyone's instagram already and i'm not excited to get married there anymore so that was what kind of put us off um there was another venue that we were this close to booking but again it was the kind that didn't really have much of a contingency if it rained it was like you were just stuck in this one location so we were back and forth for ages and it wasn't until it kind of started reaching october time that i turned to alex and went maybe we need to reconsider a Christmas wedding. So we started viewing a few venues around that period. And there was one the second we walked in, we both just fell in love with, and we knew it would work so perfectly for a magical Christmas wedding. And when it comes to like our personalities, the main thing that I really want when it comes to this wedding is that people are gonna walk in and be like, yeah, this feels like Ellie and Alex. Like, if you were to remove us from the wedding, you would still be like, no, 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 this is an Ellie and Alex wedding. And I feel like Christmas sums us up with that perfectly. You know how much I adore Christmas time. Alex personally isn't really much of like a summer guy. Despite the fact that we go on a lot of holidays, we go abroad a lot, he really doesn't like the heat, which is really funny. Like, he struggles with the heat a lot. I think his body, like, in the way that mine struggles to self-regulate when I'm cold, his struggles to self-regulate when it's hot. So I knew that he would be really uncomfortable standing there in like a three-piece suit if we were in like 30 degree weather. He wouldn't be comfortable. And I'm gonna cough again. Honestly, I feel like this video might just do me over. But yes, we both kind of agreed that we are just more wintry slash Christmas people. We have never actually attended a Christmas wedding ourselves either. And we have a lot of family. We are both the youngest in our families. So we have been to so many weddings. I've lost count of how many weddings that I have been to. And there's so many, we, we've been able to kind of cherry pick what we like liked from them. So we've been like, that was amazing. Definitely copying that. Really love that they did that. Definitely going to utilize that in our own wedding. But one kind of theme that we noticed is that no one was really doing a Christmas or a winter wedding. And I know that's not to say that like no one does them, but I just feel like they're a lot less common and a lot less, I want to say mainstream, but it's just a little bit different and it feels really really us so i'm not going to be saying where we're going to be getting married and i'm not going to tell you the exact date but i can confirm we have a date we have a venue and we are going to be getting married christmas 2026 
I'll keep all of the wedding questions like together because they all kind of lead on from each other. So the next question is what is the vibe for the wedding? And I feel like going for a Christmas wedding is pretty obvious. It's gonna be beautiful and Christmassy, but not in like a gauche way. I'm not gonna be having like Santa Claus at my wedding. It's very much going to be, actually, do you know what I might do? Where do I have that? I've got a mood board that I made Okay, hang on, let me go and get it. So if you guys have been following along since summer, let me just get the blanket back over me. If you've been following since summer, you might remember that I went on a beautiful bridal press trip to Italy. And this was before we decided we were going for a Christmas wedding. This was before we really knew exactly what we wanted. And I would definitely recommend if you're in the process of planning a wedding, do a mood board and I love the fact that we did like an old-fashioned scraps of like magazines you know like things like that we literally tore out pages from magazines to do this mood board and because it was like obviously it was September but in Italy it was very much summer and everyone else there were really bringing in those kind of like summery bright light tones and I really surprised myself with what I created with this mood board and everyone literally turned to me and went whoa that's really like grungy that's not really the word i'm looking for grungy is not the vibe that i want for the wedding but just kind of like dark beautiful ethereal those are the vibes that i want with regards to my wedding so in answer to your question this is the vibe of the wedding and this was literally decided for us essentially because this was something that i created in the moment i didn't even know that i wanted and as i'm looking at this now especially with the venue we've booked i'm like yeah 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 it's one of those like a universe aligning moment and when Alex saw this as well I literally had to bring this home in my suitcase because I sent him a photo and he was like oh my god that is amazing you have literally nailed what we want in a wedding so as you can see there's gonna be like loads of beautiful twinkly lights like I do want a lot of like wildflower I feel like with regards to Christmas trees and stuff there will be an element of that but it's not gonna like completely overrun the venue and it's not gonna overrun the theme it's gonna be more about like the beautiful twinkly lights the beautiful kind of like ambiance um and like timelessness and classicness is what we're going to be looking for. So vibe of the wedding, I would definitely recommend doing this if you are starting to plan a wedding because this has honestly helped us out so, so much when it came to knowing what to book, knowing what we want to do and knowing exactly the vibe that we are looking for. Next question, what's your bridesmaid sitch? So I haven't actually officially asked them yet, but I am going to be doing, I think like some bridesmaid boxes and I'm going to be doing um like little proposals for them however i feel like they pretty much know that they are going to be my two bridesmaids so i'm going to have two people in my wedding party my maid of honor and a bridesman so i'm actually going to have my brother and my sister in my wedding party my sister is going to be my maid of honor you guys probably know i'm her maid of honor currently and i'm just loving being a maid of honor i actually think it's more fun than being the bride <laughs> I'm really really enjoying it so my sister is my maid of honor and my little brother is going to be my bride's man and I just think it's going to be so so lovely three siblings that we've grown up together we are so so close I literally see them both at least a couple of times a week G's always coming around for dinner I'm constantly inviting my brother and his girlfriend over like it's just my favorite thing and I've always wanted to be like a tight-knit family and I've always wanted to keep them really close to me and I feel like having them in my wedding party is going to like really help solidify that so I'm really really excited to have them both in my wedding party and I'll be able to do like a kind of matchy whatever kind of color I go for the bridesmaid dress the bridesman suit I think we'll be able to match that um, and I think it will look really really lovely Someone asked to get a closer view of the engagement ring and what kind of vibe I'm going to be going for with the wedding band I feel like classic and timeless like that is just my vibe you can definitely get a bit of a closer view of the engagement ring because i love showing her off she is so so beautiful a gorgeous oval cut with a platinum ring and then my favorite thing about her is what they call the oxford bridge which is so beautiful so tiny little diamonds in this bridge which go both sides which i'm going to be really sad when i have to put a wedding band on because it's going to cover one side of the bridge can i just not wear a wedding band Probably not. I think that's really bad luck. Um, but yes, Alex and I definitely want to go for matching wedding bands. I always think it looks so, so lovely when you are completely matchy-matchy with your partner. Because he feels really left out not getting a ring. He constantly says to me, like, everyone knows you're engaged. Nobody knows I'm engaged unless I, like, actively say my fiancé or, like, my partner. Um, so, yeah, I think we're going to go for matchy wedding bands um, in platinum. But, yeah, there's a close-up of the ring for those of you who asked. Okay, last wedding-related question 
any plans for your hen do. Now, this is one that I have really gone back and forth with and thought a lot about, partially because being my sister's maid of honor, I'm currently planning her do. And I am really not a typical hen do gal. So many of my friends have already been messaging me like, oh, are we gonna do Ibiza for the week? Oh, are we gonna go to Malaga for a few days? And I am just not that kind of gal. I think my hen do is probably gonna be one of the most paired back, simple Hindus you could ever ever ask for. I have actually seen a bit of a trend on TikTok actually and it's been making me laugh because it really just like reminds me what an old soul I am. I often don't relate to like other 20 year olds and like other people my age. I much more relate to like 30, 40, 50 year olds. And I saw a trend about like what Hindus are like when you're in your 20s versus in your like 30s and 40s. And in your 20s it's like, you know, everyone going out clubbing, like you hire strippers and like all of that jazz. In your 30s it's like, let's paint mucks. And I would love that. I would be so, so happy about that. So I think with regards to my Hindu, it's going to be something so pared back. It's definitely not going to be anything like gender tied. I mean, I'm literally having a bride's man in my wedding party. So there will be men, there'll be women, because I've got like guy friends, girlfriends, there'll be friends, family, people that I just really love that I just want to kind of like bring around. I'm kind of thinking like a lotly afternoon tea or maybe just like a little weekend in the Cotswolds would probably be like the most I would go to. In fact, I would actually love to bring everyone down to the new forest that might be really really nice and just like have everyone here and maybe do like an overnight stay somewhere like Limewood or Chewton Glen just where I can like get everyone together um but I also want to make it accessible so maybe just like a huge sleepover at my house I would love that something just like with a massive charcuterie board maybe a pizza party pajama party something that is just super low-key and super I'm not gonna say unconventional because I feel like other people do do this with regards to their Hindus, but not your typical Hindu. There's not gonna be any strippers. There's not gonna be any paraphernalia about it. It's gonna be very classy. It's just gonna be really, really lovely and it's gonna be really low key. Next question is, would you and Alex get a pet? Now, this is something that actually we've spoken about so, so much and I've always been really secretive about that with you guys and I don't really know why. I think it's just because I never like saying things in case they don't happen. And especially when it comes to like pets or like future plans and things like that, there's often times where like you and your partner will have chats and maybe things don't quite come into fruition in the way that you like expect them to. But in answer to your question, yes, we would get a pet and we are really, really hoping that 2024 might be the year that we grow our family with a little fluffy one. There is a lot of factors that are involved, but we've already decided the breed that we want and we've already decided the gender that we want um, or sex that we want with regards to the dog. Um, we want a dog. <laughs> when you say, would you like a pet? Yes, we would love to get a little pet. I have never actually had a pet before. I have never had like a family pet or like a family dog or anything like that. So that's gonna be a huge learning curve for me. Luckily, Alex is a little bit more experienced. He grew up with three dogs. And one thing, this has been such a cause for contention with us when it came to choosing the breed. He grew up with two Great Danes. Now, if you don't know us, you might not know that. My partner and I have a very big height difference. I'm five foot exactly. He is six foot three. And so what's big to him is ginormous to me. What's small to me is minuscule to him. So he grew up with two Great Danes and constantly tells me they're not that big. I have seen photos of them. The Danes were not around by the time I met Alex, but I have seen photos of them and they literally were on their hind legs on his shoulders and they were as tall as he was. I'm like, I'm sorry, but I'm not getting a dog that big, especially for my first dog. There's such a learning curve around like getting a puppy, getting a dog, training them, even just like in an emergency situation, being having the strength to like lift them up and like run them to the vet if need be. So I was literally like, I am not getting a dog that large. And what he considers a large dog, I consider a huge dog what I consider a medium dog he considers a small dog so we've been back and forth a lot but am I gonna say what breed I'm not gonna say what breed but yes we would love to get a pet we're hoping 2024 might be the year that we are able to make it happen put things into a place and the plan will come into fruition but we would love to be pet parents I think I would be I think I'd be a good dog mum. I hope I'll be a good dog mum because I've never been one before, but yeah, we would absolutely love one. Okay, the next question is one that, this is gonna be such a tease that I'm even going to answer this one and I'm not even gonna fully answer it, but this person has asked, is this your forever home that you are currently in? 
And the answer is no, this is definitely not our forever home. I love this house. Honestly, when we moved here a year and a half ago, I pinched myself every single morning that I woke up. I couldn't believe that we were here. It's the perfect house for hosting. It's the perfect house for the two of us. And we do absolutely adore this home. But no, it's not our forever home. And that's all I'm gonna say. Do you know what? Every time I do a q and I think that everyone knows everything. I always assume that especially like something like me and Alex, we've been together for so long that everyone knows how we met and how long we've been together. But someone has literally asked, how did you and Alex meet? So if you don't know, we met seven years ago at university. A lot of people pick up on Alex's accent and sometimes people say actually that they struggle to understand him because he is a Northern boy through and through. He was born in Wakefield. His parents now live on the Isle of Man. So he's very much like in the Northern part of the UK. We met at Derby University. I studied liberal arts there. He studied business management. And I always promised my mum that when I went to uni, I would not bring home the first boy I met. Alex was the third. <laughs> We literally met on the first night of university and both kind of clocked each other. It took us a while to start dating though because you know what it's like in university. We were just friends. Alex had just got out of quite a long-term relationship. I was very much enjoying like university life, freedom and stuff like that. Um, but we were in the same friendship group and for like a little while, nothing really happened. We were just friends and everyone was giving it. You are definitely not just friends. So we started dating. And seven years later, here we are planning a wedding together. So yeah, literally promised my mum I wouldn't bring home the first boy I met at university. I brought home the third, so you're welcome, mother. <laughs> There's loads of questions about Alex now. I think it's because this has probably been the most that you've ever seen him. Oh, I can't get comfy now. Do you hate that when you move? Um, it's probably because Vlogmas is obviously the most that you really ever see him because we're like doing so much throughout December. Um, but someone has asked, what's your favorite thing about Alex and vice versa? Or they've put vice versa. I was not saying was vice versa. Anyway, what's your favorite thing about Alex and vice versa? I'm guessing when you mean vice versa, what's his favorite thing about me, which he's at work today, so I can't text him. Um, but my favorite thing about Alex, I mean, especially in the last few days, is just how kind and selfless he is. Like he has literally been nursing me back to health, looking after me um, and just being the most amazing fiance ever. I'd probably say favorite thing is just the fact that like he is literally my best friend. Like. I go a single day without seeing him and I miss him so, so much. He's always the first person I want to tell any news to. He's always the first person that like gets excited about anything. And I could literally spend all day, every day in his company and not be bored of him. So I think favorite thing is just probably his personality, who he is and the fact that he's just my best friend through and through. Okay, this is the first one that's actually like deviated away from like relationships and weddings and things like that. And this is quite an interesting one. This person has asked, what is your favorite and least favorite part about your job? And I definitely have to say favorite is you guys. Like that's literally why I'm coming here. I'm kind of still on my sick bed, but wanting to film this video because I just love sitting down and chatting to you guys. This really does feel like we're having a big girly catch up. And I love that about particularly YouTube. I think YouTube's my favorite platform for that sake because I just feel like I can be so much more myself i feel like we have connected on like another level and being able to dm with you to chat with you like the support that you guys give me is honestly easily my favorite favorite thing i feel like the least favorite is a lot more tricky to answer because there's definitely a few things that like make this job harder um one of which is always deliveries not arriving on time can i say that that's my favorite thing my least favorite thing about this job deliveries never arrive on time, schedules never align, and so projects become so much more stressful than they actually need to be. Yeah, I think I'd say that's my least favorite thing about this job. Why did you move down to the new forest? So this might be someone that's maybe followed me and started following me on Instagram from my kind of like London days. Um, so a couple of years ago, if you don't know, after university, Alex and I decided to move down I wanted to move to London, but he's always been a country boy at heart. So he never wanted to live in London. So we kind of lived just outside in West London in Berkshire. And we did love it for a short period of time. It was very tricky because quite quickly, I think we moved in November, 2019. And then obviously 2020, the pandemic hit. So we were very much housebound, but obviously it was a flat. So we were very much flat bound. It was tiny in comparison to the house that we live in now. I mean, at the time, it felt amazing. Like literally, I remember feeling so grown up when we moved into that flat, because the flat we had before that, dire, absolutely dire. So it was like our first grown up flat, like it just felt so, so special and it was ours. You know, like it was just 
ours and I absolutely loved it um but we basically moved down to the new forest for me to come back to my roots essentially this is where I was born and raised I grew up in Southampton and I absolutely love it down here it if you don't know where the new forest is I know I talk a lot about like the new forest versus Hampshire and I feel like sometimes people get confused the new forest is in Hampshire Hampshire is the county and the new forest is the kind of more um like smaller area that I am from but obviously I kind of spread out around Hampshire a little bit I love going to Romsey which isn't in the New Forest I love going to Winchester which isn't in the New Forest but they're all within Hampshire so Hampshire is literally right on the coast it's like bang in the middle I never know if we're like south west or south east because when it comes to trains we're southwestern but then whenever it comes to the weather we fall under southeast so we're pretty much bang in the middle of the UK in terms of like the geography like we're not really west or east but we are right on the coast so we have very mild weather in fact it did actually snow yesterday and it has literally been the first time that it snowed in Southampton I think about four years I know everyone had snow November of not technically last year but 2022 I think there was also snow like a couple of other years ago we've literally never seen it because we are so close to the sea that it's usually a little bit warm here it's also maybe like a one or two degrees warmer than usually like the rest of the UK which I love they actually call it sunny Southampton which I kind of love because it really is so much nicer in terms of like the weather here whenever we go and visit Alex's family up north I always forget how much colder it is literally just traveling like a couple of hours up there's like a three four sometimes five degree temperature difference it's absolutely mad um so in answer to your question we moved back down basically to be closer to family and to kind of like settle roots down here because we just want to live the rest of our lives here we kind of moved west of London to help put progress our careers why could I not get that phrase out we moved to London initially or just west of London to progress our careers to kind of like move forward with our lives um and I feel like every 20 something needs to like do that um but I do feel like when you're kind of like ready to settle down ready to like create more of a life together you want to be somewhere that's like a little bit more permanent so this is basically where we want to spend the rest of our lives where we want to get a house together where we want to be closer to family and eventually way down the road start a family of our own um so yeah move down here to basically carry on our lives together and i love being down in the new forest i honestly consider myself like a new forest vlogger i love being able to like show you around i'm definitely planning in 2024 of doing a few more like new forest in kind of hampshire guides so that i can show you a little bit more around like some of the villages why it's so so beautiful why you need to come and visit i've had so many of you message like i went to limewood house because of you i stayed at Shooting glen because i saw it on your stories like i love it when you guys do that and i want to continue doing that for you and continue being your resident and new forest vlogger with all of the info that you need so if ever you have any questions if ever you're thinking about coming down and visiting feel free to message me feel free to comment on this video or leave me any questions that you would like to know and on that note i can literally hear my voice getting more and more hoarse as this video is going on and there is a few other questions that i didn't answer but i'm hopeful that this was a really good introduction to me if you've just met me but also just like a really good life catch up i feel like we have covered everything like weddings families life home house updates like so many updates so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure to hit the like button if you did and hopefully from thursday onwards we will be back to usual chirpy ellie usual smiley me with high energy high vibes and I will have completely kicked this illness into touch. So I will see you guys in Thursday's video. Bye.